Okay, I see my music fest slash fanfare. I still have trouble not calling it fanfare because I came as a fan. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. Um, I have favorite memories on both sides. Um, as a fan, coming, I went, I went to uh, fanfare when it was fanfare to the last show at the fairgrounds when it was the last year at the fairgrounds and I never got any of the autographs like you know the wait in the autograph signs I never did that because I wanted to see the shows um, and I remember one of the years I was there um, we got there real early so I could get up close to this, the front of the stage it sounded like the third row and Leanne Womack was there that year and she had come in and she had had a bus wreck and she was all frazzled and she still got up there and sang after her bus had wrecked on the way and it was just like a big deal and I just thought, oh my gosh, how could you ever sing after your bus wrecks? And then, you know, then you get on the road and you realize things like that happen and you have to go on. And So that was kind of like, that stands out in my mind because I just thought it was such a big deal then that she mustered up the strength to get up there. Um, and then I went to, to see May Fest at the stadium um, as a fan a couple of years in a row. And... Uh, and then I got to be on the other side of it, which is crazy to go from sitting on the 12th row as a fan and then being on that stage, you know. Um, I remember one year Charlie Robinson was singing on the big stage at the stadium. And me and my mom had taken a Texas flag, and so we went in the photo line. And all we did, we didn't take photos. We just held up our Texas flag, like, we're from Texas too. <laughs> we were just so proud of that. Um, but now being on the other side is so crazy because I look out and I can see the spots where I sat as a fan and I'm up there on that stage and it's crazy it's it's like you know it takes me back when I'm up there singing to dreaming about it and I have to make sure I say a little prayer of thanks every time I'm up there Blake and I always talk about each other's singles and he always says I can't pick your singles and I say the same thing like we don't know how it, it's so weird to be married to an artist because our teams and our styles and everything we do is done so differently, but they both work, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, he's heard all my songs on the record, you know, when they're in the process, and he's like, I don't really think automatics. I mean, I don't think it's the one. I don't know why, and I'm, I just was like, I don't care. I think it is, <laughs> and so because it really is who I am. I mean, I have a '55 Chevy that I drive. Her name is Tammy, and I. You know, we live way in the middle of nowhere in the country, and I grew up on a farm with a clothesline, and I hang stuff over our picket fence to dry now. I mean, that's just who I am, and it's what made me who I am right now is all the things in the song and the way that I grew up, and I don't think enough of us take time out of our days to ever sit out, sit down and think about it for a second, you know? And um, I carry a Polaroid around in my purse all the time. Why? I don't know, but it's because it's a physical picture. You have it. I keep them in my wallet, and you can't, people are like, send me that. I can't, you know, and that's what's cool about it. I cannot edit it. There's no filter, and it's just, there's something about realness that, that automatic speaks of that I felt like people needed to hear, and I needed to hear for myself, and so luckily it was the right decision. I was a little nervous about it. It's not the most popular topic right now I mean it I was like well it's not about you know partying or tailgate or whatever like it's not like the most feel-good song ever but it is feel good in its own way and I wanted people to I was hoping they would grasp onto the message I was trying to send and, and they have so thank the Lord <laughs> it was a little nerve-wracking to ask you know to ask Carrie to, to be part of it and then knowing what, if she did sing on the record, what would entail if we ever wanted it to be a single and performances and all of that stuff. I mean, there's just so many pieces of the puzzle to put together, but, you know, it's not as easy as just saying, let's do a duet, you know. Um, but I, I did find the song, Something Bad. Um, when I, I knew I wanted to, to sing with her, I just feel like females should be celebrated, especially in country music. and we dang sure should stick together. So it felt right. It felt like the right time. And um, and we're both really country, and we're full-on country singers, but we both have an element of rock and roll in our music in different ways, and we're very different styles. But um, there's always that little edgy rock and roll part to her music and mine too. So when something bad came across, I was like, man, this could be the one. It's just kind of Aerosmithy. I don't know. You know, and I've seen her sing with Steven Tyler and 
Uh, we both sang with CCR and John Fogarty. Um, so that kind of was along that vein for me. And I wasn't sure, but I sent it to her and didn't hear back for a couple of days. She wanted to live with the song, and so I was a little nervous, like, okay, she hates it. She's never going to talk to me again. <laughs> She's thinking, what are you thinking? You're crazy. But um, that she loved it, and she said yes. So in the studio, when she came in, we were all pretty nervous because she's a powerhouse, man. And it really pushed me as a vocalist to hold my own. You know, I'm definitely a different singer than she is, but we have our own styles. And so putting our own spin on it and, and bringing those styles together was a great experience. And now for the fun part, we get to do it live. <laughs> and that's what I'm really looking forward to is just, you know, bringing that dynamic on stage.